Hi, this is Alex from Crooked Parts. Welcome to the next GB Science screencast on test questions, and this is episode 8. Um, today we will have a look at some general concepts and uh, chemical equations that you hopefully know. And I hope I can help you with these short screencasts to improve in your science and in the end to pass your GED test. So if you find these videos in any way helpful, please hit the subscribe button under the video. All right, let's start. So this screencast is about assumed knowledge and general concepts. Um, and it's about, as you can see, photosynthesis. If you have absolutely no idea what photosynthesis is, I already produced another screencast on these basic functions uh, and general processes of life. And um, yeah, we will post the link below the video so you can check out the other screencast on photosynthesis and respiration as well. So on the left side, we see the equation for photosynthesis down here. And what we can see is we have carbon dioxide plus water and some light here on top of the arrow gives us sugar and oxygen or 6CO2 plus 6H2O gives us C6H12O6 plus 6O2. The question is, which of these correctly identifies the products of the equation? Carbon dioxide and water, water and sugar, light, glucose and oxygen, oxygen and glucose. So the first thing we have to know, which is assumed knowledge, is that you know that C6H12O6 is glucose and that sugar is glucose. So sugar is the same as glucose. Then they ask about the products. And this is again assumed knowledge that you know the general structure of a chemical equation. And the general structure is this. On the left side of the arrow we have the reactants and on the right side we have the products. On the left side the things that combine together, the molecules that chemically react with each other and then form new molecules, new substances with new properties. In this case glucose, sugar and oxygen. So we definitely can exclude answer A, carbon dioxide and water, and water and sugar, because water and carbon dioxide are on the reactant side. So that leaves us with light glucose and oxygen, and oxygen and glucose. So light is on top of the arrow. This means it is important for the reaction, but it's not a reactant or product in the reaction. Furthermore, light is electromagnetic radiation, so it's doesn't contain any matter, it's not a chemical substance, so it can't be part of a reaction in terms of being a reactant or product. So the correct answer here is D, oxygen and glucose. All right, our next question continues to be on photosynthesis and additionally respiration. We get a little text, a little paragraph. Photosynthesis is the chemical process of using the energy in sunlight to produce glucose. Respiration is the chemical process of converting glucose to energy that can be used by the cell. The chemical equations for both processes are shown below. Photosynthesis, we need light energy for photosynthesis as we have seen in the reaction before to make the reaction between carbon dioxide and water happen and create glucose and as a byproduct oxygen. Respiration, glucose plus 6 oxygen yields us energy for the cell plus carbon dioxide and water. First question, write the correct number from the photosynthesis equation in the blanks. Photosynthesis requires molecules of carbon dioxide and molecules of water to produce one molecule of glucose. So where in this chemical equation can we see how many molecules are required? So the number of molecules is indicated by the large number here in front of
cost of the individual molecules. The small number, the subscripts, indicate the number of, in this case, oxygen, the different elements in the molecule itself. So a single carbon dioxide molecule is made of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. And in this equation, we have in total six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules. And it is asking for photosynthesis, so this is the answer. Six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water to produce one molecule of glucose. If we have one molecule in a chemical equation, we do not write that in front with a one. We just leave it blank. Right. Writing glucose includes glucose now in our equation. That means we have one of it. If we have more than one, then we have to indicate that with a two, three, four, how many, however we have in the reaction. Which statement below most accurately describes the relationship between photosynthesis and respiration? So we look at A. The energy produced by respiration is used to power the photosynthesis reaction. We get energy from respiration, yes, but is it used to power photosynthesis? No. The energy that powers photosynthesis is light energy from the sun, not energy from respiration. So it's not A. B, the reactants of photosynthesis are also used as reactants for respiration. We had this in our first question, reactants on the left side of the reaction. Reactants of photosynthesis are carbon dioxide and water. Reactants of respiration are glucose and oxygen. So B is wrong. C, photosynthesis and respiration are two different processes that both produce glucose. They are two different processes, that is correct. Do they both produce glucose? Do they both make glucose? Photosynthesis makes glucose, correct. Does respiration make glucose? No. It releases energy from glucose, but as a product or as the products, we get carbon dioxide and water. Last possible answer. The chemical products of respiration are used as reactants for photosynthesis. Okay, let's check that. Products of respiration, carbon dioxide and water, six molecules each. Again, energy is not a chemical product. We can't touch energy. It's not made of matter, so it's not a chemical product. Chemical products are only carbon dioxide and water in this case. And are they used as reactants in the light reaction? We remember reactants on the left side of the arrow. What do we have? Six carbon dioxide, six water. So the answer is correct. Six carbon dioxide, six carbon dioxide here, six water here, six water here. Reactants, products. D is the correct answer. So I hope I could help you a little bit in the screencast to understand the concepts of uh, chemical equations and how to read them and uh, how to read the small subscripts, how to understand these small subscripts and what's the difference between our large numbers here in front indicating the total amount of molecules whereas the subscripts indicate the number of atoms in our molecule and the general concept of chemical equations where we have reactants on the left side and products on the right side. Again, if you want to know more about these general life functions and processes, photosynthesis and respiration, there are already some screencasts on our page that go into a little bit more detail on that topic. All right, that's all from me, Alex from Phuket Pals. Thank you very much for watching this video. Again, if I could help you in any way with this video, please hit the subscribe button below. I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.